Welcome to this Tutor to You Criminology video for WJEC Level 3 Criminology. In this video, we're going to look at biological theories of criminality, focusing on brain abnormality. Brain abnormality and neurochemical reactions are biological theories of criminality that suggest that criminal behavior is a result of abnormal functioning within the brain either through the process of illness, injury, or inadequate functioning of neurotransmitters. In this video, we're going to look at some of the causes of crime that are attributed to these issues. As the brain regulates not only the functioning of our bodies, but also our thought processes and intentions, examining issues with how the brain works and attributing the causes of crime to different issues offers criminologists many insights into why people commit crime. One area of the brain that helps to regulate behavior is the prefrontal cortex located at the front of the brain. This part of the brain regulates our emotions and behaviors and damage to this part of the brain may impact on the way in which people perceive the world and how they behave. The study of the brain and brain injuries has been aided by the use of technology, including PET scans, which allow neuroscientists to see activity in the brain and how they function when given certain tasks or shown different stimuli. Using this method, RAIN examined the brain activity of convicted criminals and found reduced activity in the prefrontal cortex compared to individuals who were not criminals. Diseases can also impact on the normal functioning of the brain, particularly if these leave tumours and lesions, or that is, scar tissue, on the brain that impairs its functioning. One example of this is found in dementia patients. Dementia is an illness that impacts on the functioning of the brain and leads individuals to be unable to recall memories, recognise people, and it also leads to aggressive outbursts as the disease progresses. However, the extent to which outbursts are due to frustration at their illness could limit this explanation. Earlier research into encephalitis lethargica suggested that this disease, which is also known as sleeping sickness, was linked to criminality in children, for example, arson. A final example of the impacts of brain illness and disease is provided by Charles Whitman, also known as the Texas Tower Sniper, Whitman, a former Marine, stabbed and killed his mother and wife before killing a further 14 people, 11 of whom he shot from the 28th floor of the University of Texas clock tower. A post-mortem on Whitman revealed a tumour in his prefrontal cortex that was believed to have inhibited his ability for rational thought. A third example of brain abnormality that could cause crime is neurochemistry. Our brain regulates the activity of hormones and neurotransmitters that influence our behaviour, and several of these have been linked to behaviours that cause crime. For example, low levels of serotonin are linked to higher levels of aggression, and this can be exacerbated through the use of drugs and alcohol, as well as occurring naturally through mood disorders such as depression. Research by Skirbo and Rain found that people with lower levels of serotonin were also more likely to display antisocial behaviours than those who had normal levels of serotonin. And finally, testosterone, the male hormone, has been measured as being higher in people that commit criminal and aggressive behaviours, and this helps to explain why males are more likely to commit violent crimes than females. Like other theories of criminality, it's necessary to assess the strengths and limitations of brain abnormality as an explanation of criminality. The growth of technology and greater understanding of the brain in recent years have meant that criminal behaviour is able to be studied by examining the brain, and this has produced many effective biological treatments for criminal behaviours. However, despite the growing knowledge base, research is often based upon small samples or individuals in part due to the ethics of measuring people's activity and to try and predict criminal behaviour. As a result, it's difficult to establish cause and effect. Finally, there is also comorbidity of symptoms, that is, other conditions that might affect an individual's behaviour alongside low serotonin or excessive testosterone, such as depression or anxiety, and this could negatively impact on our ability to suggest that brain illness, abnormality or injury is the sole cause of criminal behaviour.